Hi, I'm Heidi Harriet. Welcome to Horse Tricks. Horse Tricks is a step-by-step -step trick horse training program that will allow you to train your own horse to do some fun tricks. Well, I'm happy to have you here. Let's get started. In this episode, we're going to give you a peek into the training of a dancing horse. We're also going to train the most requested trick, the bow. All this and more coming up next on Horse Tricks, so stay tuned. Well, throughout the year, I perform around the country and have other folks work with their horses and do some training. When I get back to Florida, it's always exciting to be able to work with my family and spend time with them, including working with my favorite coach, trainer, and mentor, my dad, John Harriet. This is my sister, Cindy, and my daughter, Cassidy. I have two other sisters. They also, everybody in the family performs and works with animals. Now, my dad and my grandfather before him have really set the tone for our training program and how we deal with our animals and what I'm passing along. So, Daddy, I'd love for you to tell the folks a little bit about what, what your training program has entailed. Well, uh, and being part of a animal training family, in some ways it's quite unusual, but uh, in our uh, repertoire of what we do, began with my father, and not only with horses, there's a, a elementary training of so many different animals. My father tackled bears and leopards and horses and elephants and so on. And I've done the same thing. I think the horse and the equestrian art are, uh, are the most important thing in training animals because having horse sense, so to speak. And we know that the horse was so predominant so many years ago when everybody had to learn to drive a carriage or ride a horse or ladies rode side saddle and so many things. So uh, that's what it's evolved into. I think that any animal trainer usually has a good cross section of other animals uh, rather than horses. The one thing I found with animal training that's exciting for me is that we're actually getting inside an animal's brain. We're communicating with them. It's not only physical, it's mental. And uh, so when we start to train an animal, it isn't just that we bring them out, put them on a lunge line and go to work. We observe them in the stable. We uh, see what kind of disposition they have. We try to figure out what personalities they might have. Maybe some little quirks that we know we're going to have to get, work the animal around that and get to understand them. So each animal becomes individualistic with, the, with us. And the, the wonderful thing is, is when we find out that we are communicating with them. That's so exciting. So we try to work the animal every day, five days a week. It's very similar to a teacher with children in school. We try to work five days a week. We try to work maybe on Saturday morning a little brushing up. We don't try to add anything to it. And uh, on Sunday is a day of rest for the animal. We find that on <laughs> Friday they become a little uh, irritable because they're kind of getting tired of it. On Monday, they're refreshed and they're ready to go. So those are the things that uh, are important to me. It's part of my principles of training when I talk about progress. Of course, those principles came from the foundation with my father and then what I've experienced. So it is such an important part that you don't hear a lot in some of the other folks that are out there doing training in that but the progress is just such an important part of it. So now we're gonna have some fun and I'm actually gonna get my dad back out in the arena, I'm gonna get on my dancing horse and get a little coaching myself. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Lisa from Michigan writes that when she's working with her horse, she gets along with it pretty well, but when she's trotting along, it just stops and she can't make it go. Well, this is a common problem I'm working with with a few people this winter as well. There are two things about that. The first is, I think we're seeing a few holes in the basic training, the foundation. So you're not quite the leader in this situation and the horse is making a decision when this is happening. Secondly, 
keep the mindset of I'm not requesting that you trot, I'm telling you we're going to trot. So if you have a very positive mindset and a kind of a can-do attitude about it, you'll find out that the horse will follow suit. If you're sitting on the horse saying, I hope you trot, I hope you trot, there's a chance that the horse is not going to trot. It's going to be left up to the horse. As opposed to sitting on the horse saying, we are now going to trot. That should help you go back to the basics and have a very positive attitude and that should get you through. You can always email me your horse-related questions to Heidi at Horsetricks.com. Okay, so we're going to do a little dancing horse tune-up here. And again, I've asked my father, John Harriet, to join me because this is a thrill for me to actually be the student and have a trainer such as my dad out here. So, Daddy, I'm going to have you go ahead and tell him about high school, which I'm doing hot at coal, and the difference between that and a dancing horse while I warm up Lady Dancer. Okay? Wonderful. Well, Heidi, I, you know that. Uh, and Heidi's trick horse or trick training, there uh, are different uh, parts of the equestrian arts. And certainly one of the important ones is the horse and rider, uh, what we're seeing now. And it's, uh, it starts off very elementary. And then we can become more sophisticated and uh, what we call uh, uh, high school, high school riding or high school training. In France or Europe, they would say haute école. It means a higher level of uh, horsemanship than general equitation. And we develop certain movements that become part of that. And that's, uh, Heidi's in the canter now. And the canter consists of what we call the, the lead. The horse is now on what we would refer to as the uh, 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 right side lead. You see that now she's changed and now the horse is leading with its left front four, or left front four foot. So uh, the uh, sophisticated thing that happens here is when she's able to make the horse change its leads while it's in the canter. And that's a, a very beautiful and can be done on the count of five, four, three, and the, uh, and the uh, five is when the horse can chain leads on one, which means it's actually skipping when it does this. The flying chain. So the, that's part of the cantering. And now we're going to show you the trick that we're actually going to train in this segment. I'll show you how we do it mounted. And that's a beautiful bow. Nice training segment, Daddy. <laughs> I love traveling around the country with my horses performing and facilitating clinics. I get to meet a lot of great people. If you're interested in hosting a clinic and you have a facility or a location, let me know. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. There's a lot of options available. We can do trick horse training, liberty training, dancing high school horse training, and or general horsemanship. So lots of options available. I'd love to come to you and facilitate a clinic. Well, as I said in this episode, we're going to train the most requested trick. We're going to train the bow. So I'm excited about that. I know many of you are ready for that. So I've enlisted the help of Lady Dancer to help me show you what it looks like. All right, Lady, you ready to show, train the bow for everybody? Okay, she says she's ready. So here we go. Lady Dancer, take a nice bow for us. Bow down. Good, that's what it looks like. Whoa. All right. And that's the bow. Now we're going to show you how to train that. Okay, so you saw a demonstration of the bow with Lady Dancer. And now I'd like to introduce this beautiful little halflinger. Her name is French Lace, and she's our candidate to learn the bow. Now, a few things about the bow. We're going to take this slowly and really break it down for you because, again, it's, it's one of the more difficult tricks to train. And I know everybody wants to do this. So first and foremost, again, imperative. I know I sound like a broken record, but make sure that you have your horse desensitized that you've worked him out. We worked her in the round pen here for a while to expend her energy. Cassidy was just running her around. So that was good. It also gets him paying attention to you. You also want to make sure you have a horse who's got a really good foundation because you'll see in a few minutes that they will start jumping around a lot. That'll be your guideline to whether or not your horse is actually ready for this. Okay, so we're going to talk about tools and tack as always. Now I have tools and tack and your helper. This is a trick I would encourage you to bring someone else along for safety and for assistance. 
So I've got my daughter Cassidy here helping out. Okay, so the tools in tack we have, our hobble is gonna be very important here. Now these are actually hard to find to purchase. This is a single hobble, it's padded. It's really nice and easy on the horse. And um, I actually sell these because they're difficult to find. So if you're trying to do this, check my website. We've got a lunge line, about a 10 foot soft cotton lunge line. We have a little dressage whip and we have a pair of gloves, which are optional. Now, as far as the horse, we have on the regular webbing halter like usual and a set of reins hooked in, okay? So that's what we need to get started. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna take the hobble, Cassidy. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put the hobble on the horse. So what we wanna do is have our horse stand still be able to bend right down here and get this hobble right around the ankle, the small part, and put it right on there. It's nice and padded so there's no problems. Now, she stood still really nice for that. She's a horse I can let go and stand still. This is perfect. Now we're gonna take our lunge line. What's important here is to actually, before we even start training the trick, I'm gonna hook that lunge line right into the hobble on the front. We're gonna hold it up and I'm gonna walk this horse in a circle right around Cassidy. I want the horse to know it has something attached to its leg. Come on, come on, Miss French Lace. She doesn't move real fast. <laughs> come on, pretty girl. Well, that's good. She doesn't seem to mind this at all. Again, another really good sign that her foundation is pretty good and that she's desensitized and not a spooky horse. Excellent. Well, stay here for me. Oh, right there. Good. Okay, so we'll unhook that. So far, our little litmus test went well. I'm going to drop this over her back. Let it fall right down on the other side, just like this. And now I want to reach under behind the front legs and hook this to the hobble, which is on her left front leg. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my little dressage whip. The horse has its, its halter, the lead rope. I've actually tied the reins right up by the withers because you'll see in a minute, we wanna be able to reach right up here without having to pull way back. The very first thing I'm gonna do is just get the horse accustomed to picking up their leg. I'm gonna take this, my left hand, my right hand, reach way over the horse's back. You're in a position as though you were actually gonna vault on the horse. You're between the front and back legs. You snug yourself right up against the horse. It's actually the safest position to be in. Now I know I've got a helper here, but it's very important that the helper only be there to hand you tools and make sure the environment stays safe. They shouldn't get too close to you or behind you so that you can't get out of the way. Again, those principles of training, safety first. So Cassidy's gonna, st she's helped me with this before. She knows how to move out of the way. I'm actually gonna ask you to step forward right about there, good. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, I'm reaching over, I'm grabbing the blue, the blue uh, lead rope, which is a different color than the black so you can separate them. I'm gonna take my little dressage whip and tap on her leg and ask her to pick up her leg and say foot. Good, ho. That's all I wanna do right now. I just want this to be comfortable. Now again, this is another test. If your horse was already jumping around here, I'm gonna suggest to you that you spend a little bit more time on your groundwork and then come back and try the bow another time. So I'm gonna say, good, all right. Now I'm gonna turn her this way to give you a better idea of what I did with my hand. Ho, right there. So again, <clears throat> this is what it looks like from the other side. <coughs> Run your hand down here, again, like you're getting ready to vault on the horse, with your left hand and your little whip, touch their foot and say foot. Good, and pull that up. When you get it up, your hand should be just up by their withers. It shouldn't be way over or still way over here. This is just about where you want it. I'm gonna have her stand here for a second like this. We want the foot to be parallel to the ground. We don't want to pull the foot way up under the belly and we don't want it to be too low. We want it to be parallel to the ground. That's perfect. All right. Good girl. That's excellent. Okay. Come on up and stand right up here. Good. Ho. Ho. Good girl. So, so far we're doing really good on this. Again, go through those steps really slowly. Have them pick up their foot. Some of your horses that are a little bit more warm or hot blooded, you may be doing the pick up the foot 
for a few lessons and may not get to the bow for a few lessons, that's absolutely fine. I want to encourage you to take your time. Okay, so before we actually get into the, the actual bow, we've been picking up the leg, a few reminders, because all this will start happening fast, and I want you to keep your head about you. Again, one of the principles of training is patience. First thing I'm going to do is have Cassidy walk around to the other side of the horse for me. Normally, we would be doing this right up against a rail. So this side of the horse, you'd want to be against a fence or a rail or something like that, the wall, because then they can't swing over. All they can do is go forward or back. You're here to stop them from coming this way. So I'm going to have Cassidy stay a little bit back towards the rear end just to keep her this direction so I can show you exactly what we're doing. That's the first thing. The second thing are, is that you need to make sure you remember a few things about trick training. One is your cues, utilizing your cues. So as we go through this process, she's not going to know any of these cues yet, but we're still going to use the cues. For example, the first one I'm going to say foot, which is what we do when we want them to pick up their feet for the farrier. So that's first. Then as I pull back, I'm actually going to say to the horse, bow down. It's really important that you say these things because these are the cues, the verbal cues. We're going to use our tool and the cue of tapping their leg at the same time. That's what we want to move into. Now, really important is your release cue. You get the horse down in the bow. When they get down into the bow, say, whoa. Say it sternly, make them understand you need them to stay in place. If you've worked with your horse a lot on the foundation, this should be something they know. When you're ready for them to get up, once we do the bow, we're gonna throw this loose, the hobble, and say, all right, or okay, let them know they can get up. So I want you to keep all of this in mind. These are really important aspects of getting this trained. Now, one of the other things that we're doing I'm training the bow standing right here. I help a lot of people train this trick, and a lot of them have gotten their horse started. So they're training the bow and they have their treat, <clears throat> and they get down here like this, and they actually get the beginning of a bow. The problem is this. It, they're using the treat as a bag, which we don't like to do. I encourage you not to do. Secondly, if you could actually train the bow like this to get them down, Keep the horse there by saying, whoa, get up and walk away from the horse and keep it in the bow. That would be terrific. It doesn't usually happen that way when you're training it in that fashion. So what I'm showing you with trick training is how to train the trick from the position that you're actually going to be in once the trick is trained. When I, you just saw me with Lady Dancer, I stood right here and said bow down. So I'm training the trick from this position because we don't change our cues, we don't change our position. We train the tricks, the yes is right here, the no, we stand in the same position that we're gonna have the finished product. It's very important for lots of reasons, including the consistency, again, one of my principles of training. This is also a safer place to be, believe it or not. A lot of you are gonna ask the horse to pick up their foot with the hobble, they're gonna dance around a little bit. I'm gonna encourage you to stay right in this position you're less likely to get stepped on and hurt. And if you stay right with the horse, you'll get the result, I promise you. If your horse has a good foundation and they're ready for this, it will happen for you. So if you're training the bow down here, that's great. When you get up, you wanna say, whoa, and the horse should stay in that position. Ultimately, a lot of you wanna bow to get on your horse, which I do. So what you do then, the horse is bowed down. We put our foot in the stirrup, we say, all right, as the horse gets up, we step right up into the saddle. It's absolutely wonderful. It doesn't require a mounting block. So some of the things to keep in mind with the bow. Again, I told you I wanted to really break this down for you, make it really easy to understand. Okay, so I'm gonna explain these things as we go along, but I wanted to make sure you understood all that up front. So here we go. We're gonna to try to do the bow with Miss French Lace. So again, same thing. I'm gonna put my hand way over here. I'm gonna say foot foot. Good. I'm actually going to drop my whip right now because I need a second hand to pull back on the reins. And I'm going to ask her to bow down, bow down, down, bow down, right beside her. Ho, whoa, whoa. All right. That was picture perfect. So that was picture perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now stay tuned when we come back. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about the bow. 
Well, that was fantastic. I want to do it one more time real quick, just to make sure it looks the same. We're going to reach over, say foot. Good, and pull that foot up. Drop your whip. Pull back and say bow down. Stay right with her. See my position? Ho. Ho. I want her head up. Good. Ho. All right. That's perfect. So I remembered to say foot. I remembered to tap her. I remembered to say whoa when she's down to keep her in place till I'm ready to let her up and then use my release cue. All right. So that was a great example of a bow with a horse who's nice and easy. Now we're going to make this a two-parter. Next week we're going to come back and show you how to get some help using some more tools and tack like your saddle and bridle for a horse that you're having trouble with or you're just not strong enough to get your horse into the bow. So I know one way or another we're going to help you get the bow. So check in on our next episode and we'll give you some more detail about that. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more horse tricks. Today's training tip is about expectations. Today I actually had an opportunity to work with my mentor, coach and trainer, my father. He taught me to set the bar high. I work with a lot of folks and coach folks over the year who actually get a little tentative about working with their horse and tend to lower the standards or lower the expectations. So I would say to you, set the bar high, expect good results, and don't settle for less. Today's training tip. I hope you enjoyed our show today. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your horse training journey. We hope to see you next time, and remember, happiness is horses.